I will now provide you with a demonstration of the Workflow Engine's functionality. Let's begin. This is Workflow Server, another one of our products, serving as a wrapper for the Workflow Engine and an example of its integration. Currently, we find ourselves in the Schema Management menu, where we will proceed to create a new schema for the Document Approval Workflow. This is a workflow designer, a graphical workflow engine component that can be seamlessly embedded into your application. Let me walk you through the process of creating a diagram step by step. First, I will open the Elements drop down menu, which you can expand either by connecting plugins or by writing your own plugins. Next, I will add four new activities, with each one representing a different step in the workflow. The first step of the workflow will be draft, which I will designate as the initial step, signifying it as the starting point of the process. I will create two parallel transitions to change the state of the process. The top transition will lead to the Alex review step, while the bottom one will lead to the Mary review step. Next, we will incorporate the capability to terminate the process by defining the last activity as approved and specifying it as a final activity. When reaching this activity, the process will automatically transition to the finalized state. To manage the process, we will introduce several commands including to Alex, to Murray, and approve. In this step, we will assign a command to each transition to ensure that these transitions are executed only upon user request. Next, we will establish actors to control access to specific commands. An actor represents a team executor, which could be a particular user, role, or even a third-party application. I want Alex to have the ability to move processes exclusively to the Alex review step using the to Alex command and Marie to have the capability to transfer processes to Marie Review via Tomarie. To achieve this, I will impose restrictions on the execution of these commands, permitting them to be carried out only by these specific actors. Now that our circuit is prepared for testing, let's proceed by creating it, saving it, and instantiating the process. We move to the workflow view, and this is how your designer will appear when you pass the process ID to it. As you can observe, the current activity is highlighted in orange. To advance, I will execute the command. We are currently in the interface for interacting with the Workflow Server API. You can seamlessly integrate command calls into any part of your application. I'm loading the available commands. As you can see, I don't have any commands available because I haven't provided an identity ID. Let's input Alex's ID, and you'll see the corresponding command for Alex. Now, if I switch to Marie's ID, you'll notice the command for Marie. This is how actor configuration functions. Let's execute the command to proceed to the next activity. As a result, 
you can observe that the process state has changed. Now let's complete our process. Please take note that the Approve command can be accessed regardless of the identity ID that is provided. The reason for this is that we have not placed any limitations on this particular transition. This is great news. The process has now reached its conclusion and its status has been modified to Finalized. Now, let us go back to our diagram in order to demonstrate the enhancements and migration that have taken place. I will add the capability to roll back document confirmation in the event of an error during Alex or Marie's review. This involves creating a new activity named Rollbacked, along with a rollback command and the corresponding transition. To demonstrate how timers function works, I will include a timer set with a 5 second interval to revert the process to its initial state. Let's save the diagram and observe the impact on the previously created process. As you can see, there haven't been any changes so far, which is expected because the process updates automatically when prompted for available commands. Let's request the commands. Now, as you can observe, I have access to the rollback command and can proceed to execute it. The schema has been updated and you can already see the new activity. While I've been speaking, our timer should have already reverted the process to its initial state. As you can see, we've successfully completed the workflow without making a single change to the code. Thank you for your attention, and welcome to OptiMagit Workflow Engine.